Traceroute is a cornerstone tool for anyone in IT. Doesn't matter if you work with networks, servers, PCs, phones, printers, whatever, we've all used Traceroute. But do you take this tool for granted? Have you ever wondered how it magically finds the hops along a path? If you're answering yes to either of these questions, this video is for you. Before we get right into Traceroute, there are two technologies we need to briefly review. These are ICMP and Time to Live. ICMP is a very old protocol, which was designed to work with IP to enhance its functionality. Ping is a simple example of ICMP in action. When we send a ping, we are sending an ICMP echo message. The target will send back an ICMP echo reply. But what if something is wrong? Maybe there's no route to this destination. This router can send back an ICMP destination not found message. This can give us useful information on the state of the network. In the IP header, there is a field called TTL or time to live. The TTL is a number of layer three hops that the packet can pass through before it is discarded. We need this because sometimes we can accidentally create routing loops. Without a mechanism like TTL, a packet could be forwarded around a loop indefinitely and add enough looping packets and will overload the router or saturate one or more of the links between them. Imagine that we have a packet with a TTL of 30. The first router will lower this to 29 and forward the packet on. The next will lower it to 28. The TTL will continue to decrease with each hop until either the packet reaches its destination or the TTL reaches zero. If the TTL reaches zero, the router that's handling the packet at the time will discard the packet. But here's the interesting part. It will also send an ICMP time exceeded message back to the source IP. In this way, the sender knows that the packet has been dropped. Okay, we're ready for traceroute now. Let's think about a Windows PC running a traceroute to find the path to a server. It will send an ICMP echo message, just like a ping, towards the server. Now, if, if you're wondering, yes, I do know that not all devices will use ICMP, and I will get to that in a minute. The difference between this traceroute message and a ping message is that the TTL of this one will be set to one. The first router will lower the TTL by one, leaving it at zero. Of course, following the rules, the router must then discard this packet. Now, what else does it do when the TTL is zero? It will send back an ICMP time exceeded message. The workstation gets this message and it looks at the source IP. It now knows the first hop in the path. Clever, isn't it? The workstation will now create another ICMP message, this time with a TTL of two, and it will send it along its way. The first router will lower the TTL from two to one and forward it along to the next hop. The second route will lower the TTL to zero. It discards the packet. It sends an ICMP message back and the workstation now knows the second hop. This process continues until we have the full path, or at least until Traceroute fails to find the target device. Most implementations of Traceroute will try up to 30 hops by default, so if your target is further than 30 hops away, you might not see the end of the path. A lot of systems, including Linux and a lot of networking devices, will not send an ICMP echo message like Windows does. Instead, their version of Traceroute will use UDP. They will send their first message with a destination port of 33,434. The rest of course is the same. The TTL is still one, and the first hop still sends an ICMP time exceeded message back. When the second message is sent, not only is the TTL increased to two, but the destination port is increased to 33,435. It is unlikely that the final device will be listening on one of these UDP ports, so it will send back an ICMP port unreachable message. This message is fine for traceroute, as that's what we're expecting to see. In fact, that's how we know we've reached the end of the path. Something to be aware of with this message is if you have a firewall along the path somewhere. To allow a Windows machine to traceroute through a firewall, you only need to allow ICMP in both directions. 
To allow a Linux-like device to trace route through a firewall, you need to allow ICMP and a range of UDP ports as well. Speaking of firewalls, some devices will hide from traceroute. Cisco ASA firewall in particular is known for this behavior. What do I mean by hiding from traceroute? Think of this topology where we have a firewall in the path. When we run a traceroute from the workstation to the server, the firewall simply doesn't appear in the list. They do this for security. If someone malicious is trying to use traceroute to learn about your network, they won't find your firewalls, which after all, are a security device. This sounds good, but it's a trade-off with troubleshooting. So how do they hide themselves? They simply don't decrement the TTL of a packet before passing it on. Once again, it's really clever, isn't it? And that's the wonderful world of Traceroute. I have some links in the description if you'd like to read more about Traceroute and ICMP, as well as getting your firewalls visible again. I hope you've enjoyed your time here.